Welcome to the ABS Workshop Series. The videos in this series give you new ideas and tools from ABS to help you run your business more efficiently, impact your bottom line, and improve the overall value of your herd. Today's topic is Net Profit Genetics. How does cow size and profit fit into the equation? Did you know you can earn $13,000 more profit per year for every 100 cows just by using genetic selection to increase income and control expenses? Let's first look at a livestock species that has made tremendous gains in efficiency through genetics. Over the last 40 to 50 years, the pig industry has selected objectively for the desired traits by letting data drive the process. Along with improvements in management practices, this has unleashed a dramatic improvement in many key performance metrics, including pigs per litter, getting more meat from less feed, and less manure produced. Very little emphasis was put on their appearance because it would affect the pig's performance data. This is where the dairy industry differs greatly. We still put excess emphasis on physical appearance. There's no doubt past genetic selection in our dairy cows has yielded some significant positives. Through extreme production emphasis, we can attribute thousands of pounds of milk increase over the last 50 to 60 years to genetics. Because of the emphasis on type, we have greatly changed the appearance of the cow and you simply don't find udders and feet and legs as the weak link in today's herds. Because the appearance of the animal and how much she produces is easy to see and measure, that's where most of the emphasis has been so far in dairy cattle breeding. But it is no secret that profit is income minus expenses, what you get out versus what you put in. Although we have greatly improved the income potential of our cows, we have indirectly been selecting for a cow that also requires much more expense and is higher maintenance. One of those devastating trends is a dramatic decline in our Holstein cows for DPR, which is a trait indicating how easily cows get pregnant. We have absolutely destroyed the female fertility of our Holstein cows to the point where we are looking for quick fixes. Fixes like crossbreeding or blaming semen fertility instead of adjusting our selection criteria properly to fix the infertility of our cattle. The trend in cow size is also very concerning. As much as we say udders and feet and legs are important, the two traits in which we have made the most progress in the last 30 years are stature and dairy form. So, more than anything else, we have made cows taller and skinnier, and not only is stature increasing, it is doing so at an exponential rate. A bull with a score of zero for stature today would be plus 11 on the 1980 genetic base. Body composite is the calculation of body size by measuring the dimensions of the cow, so one point of body composite is equal to roughly 24 pounds of body weight. It would be logical to assume that larger cows eat more, and the NRC guidelines confirm that. The NRC tells us that ruminant animals must consume between 1 and 2 percent of their body weight as dry matter each day for maintenance. The main reason why the dairy industry has made such large gains in body size is due to heritability. Higher heritability means more genetic progress can be made. So, we can make cows larger or smaller easier than we can change udders or feet and legs. So often we hear producers say, I just want a cow that calves easily, produces efficiently, gets back and calf quickly, is appropriate size for my facility, and doesn't require special attention. I've always used good bulls, why is this so hard? The truth is, despite having large amounts of data at our fingertips, we still allow conventional wisdom that dates back hundreds of years to influence how we breed and select cattle today. We'll try to make a cow look like she should do something, rather than select directly for exactly what it is we want and accept what the cow may look like. Think about it. How did we grow up in the dairy industry? We chose cows that looked good, and that has carried over generations. This might be best for the show ring, but not for our profitability. When we summarize the nearly 600 proven Holstein bulls available in the industry today, like on this chart where each bull is represented by a dot, we can accurately quantify how daughters of bulls truly perform in the herd when compared to their herd mates. When accounting for age, stage of lactation, and other variables, we see that there is no correlation to body size and milk production. However, we do see a negative correlation between body size and daughter fertility. 
bull siring larger daughters have lower daughter pregnancy rates and thus more days open when compared to smaller framed contemporaries. The productive life trait is how many additional months daughters remain in the herd compared to the breed average. So when we look at the longevity of these daughter groups, bulls with larger daughters are removed from your herd sooner than more moderately sized herd mates. Past genetic selection has given us a cow today that does produce high volumes of milk and is prettier to look at. However, with the correlation between tight score and stature being 0.77, this has led to a much larger cow that eats more feed, may not fit facilities, requires more intensive efforts to get pregnant, and is overall a higher maintenance cow to manage. Through proper genetic emphasis, we can make a cow that still produces high volumes of milk and looks the part, but we just won't overemphasize appearance beyond those qualities that have an economic purpose. High production combined with reduced body size results in greater feed efficiency and cows that fit comfortably in the environment they live in. Increased emphasis on health will result in less intensive reproduction and simply a lower maintenance cow that tends to stay out of the sick pen and in the mainstream of the herd. Here's an example of bulls used in a real herd that were selected using traditional benchmarks of 1,000 pounds milk, two points tight, and two points udder composite compared to a suggested group of ABS sires. The specially selected ABS sires provide more production income per lactation in the form of fat and protein. Using the NRC guidelines, we can expect the smaller cows this group will produce to eat at least one pound less dry matter per day. This extra income combined with reduced feed cost results in $130 more profit per cow or $13,000 for every 100 cows you milk per year. Plus, these daughters will last for nearly three more months in the herd. Just as cows have changed over the years, so have the reasons why they are removed from the herd. We just don't see cows being culled from the herd because of confirmation or type issues anymore. So it only makes sense that we update our genetic selection criteria to reflect these profit-robbing traits. Here you can see the reasons why dairy cows were culled from North American herds in 2013 according to DHIA records. Type and confirmation issues contribute to only 2% of the culls, with the majority of cows leaving because of reproductive failure or milk quality. The good news is that the majority of these reasons for culling can be managed genetically by having an organized program for your bull selection. In summary, by focusing on production, body size, female fertility, longevity, and calving ease traits, and using an ABS precision genetics program, you'll improve your herd over the next three years and help your profitability. The best part is, when we see a downturn in the market, you'll be better poised to weather the storm. A genetic audit is your next step to learn more or get started. For a no-charge genetic audit of your herd, contact your local ABS salesperson or call 800-ABS-STUD.